Today we're talking about the deadliest moped of all time. Ladies and gentlemen, France's Vespa 150 Tap, AKA the Bazooka Vespa. Yeah, this is a French design, it's not even American. But I'm gonna do a video on it anyways because game recognized game. I mean, look at the quality of grunts and crafts they got going on over there. I'm not even sure where to start. First of all, despite the name, that's not actually a bazooka. That's a 75 millimeter anti-tank recoilless rifle. Yeah, you ever heard of Uber Eats? This is Uber Retreats. They literally just slapped an anti-tank cannon onto a moped and called it good. I mean, the dude driving the thing literally has to sit on top of the barrel, which I think might actually make this the world's first crotch rocket. I'm not really sure. But there's one thing I am sure of, and that's this thing is definitely in the running for the weirdest military motorcycle of all time. I mean, it's gotta be between this and the Kettenrad, that time during World War II when the Germans wanted to make a half tank, half motorcycle. You know, for all those situations where you've thought to yourself, man, I wish I had a vehicle that that had all the mobility of a tank and all the safety features of a motorcycle. What a great idea. Dumb. I mean, let's be honest, the only reason they ever built that was to show off their engineering prowess. And I will give it to them, the Germans can engineer just about anything, except for a world war win. This video is getting demonetized. So, this video is brought to you by Aventin e-bikes. I personally have their adventure mountain bike and it's way more fun than I ever thought it would be. It can go 45 miles on a single charge and it can get up to 28 miles an hour without me even having to pedal. I'm trying to tell you it's all the childhood fun of riding a bike with none of the exercise and I still get to let the Amish people know that me and Nicola are homeboys, which is priceless. So if you're ever in the market for an e-bike, I would recommend Aventin. I'll have them linked in the description down below. Anyways, back to this monstrosity. One word comes to mind. Why, 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 why is this a thing? Well, like every great grunts and crafts project, there were failures that needed to be addressed. And as a wise man would say, failure is the pathway to innovation, which is a politically correct way of me trying to tell you that France got their fucking ass beat by tanks in World War II, and this was their solution. Now, if you don't know, France has had one of the most dominant military histories of all time. And despite what a lot of people think or say, France actually had a very, very powerful military during World War II. But what had happened was France was doing the normal, logical, conventional thing at the time by putting all their men evenly along their entire border. And Germany decided to use a new tactic known as the Blitzkrieg, which is basically they utilize their entire force to punch through the enemy line in one small spot and then just trailblaze a path all the way to the enemy objectives. Here's an animation of what that looks like to give you a better idea. This immediately put the French on their heels and they were never able to actually recover during World War II. And this is why they ended up surrendering in only like six weeks. And because of surrendering in only six weeks, this is where all the jokes come from about like France retreating all the time, you know, like, oh, French French tanks have 16 gears, 15 in reverse, and only one forward, you know, in case the enemy ambushes them from behind. That's where those jokes come from. And as I'm sure you all know, the Allied forces won World War II and France was restored. Then in like the 1950s, our military leadership decided, hey, we should probably have a plan in case this ever happens again. Well, the problem with the Blitzkrieg attack is you don't actually know where it's gonna take place. So the only way that you could really counter it is to have a very mobile, very fast responding anti-tank force. So they came up with the Bazooka Vespa and gave it to their paratrooper units. Yeah, the paratroopers were literally gonna yeet the Vespas out the back of the plane and then yeet themselves out the back of the plane. And then as soon as they landed semi close to the battlefield, they'd hop on their Vespas, find where the enemy tanks were and just start yeeting the spicy baguettes at them. I'm just gonna level with you. I, I love it. I think it's a genius idea. Because post-World War II, there was a metric fuck ton of recoilless rifles and ammunition left over, and France had their own factories for manufacturing Vespas, and they were relatively cheap. I mean, this entire setup only cost them $500 at the time. To put that into perspective, a German Tiger tank during World War II cost $300,000. So if you got the chance to take out a $300,000 tank with a $500 Vespa, that's worth it. Worf. And it's fucking demoralizing. I mean, let's be honest. In conclusion, at this point in time, I think I've got to give the coolest slash weirdest military motorcycle of all time title to the French. And if you could think of something cooler slash weirder than this, let me know in the comments down below and I'll look into it. If you made it this far, thanks for watching. Best way to support the channel is go buy some merch at thefatelectrician.com. Quack bang out. <laughs>